Mr. President, Mr. Chancellor, members of the Senate, guests, graduates, family and friends, good morning to you all. It gives me immense pleasure, thrill and honor to receive this distinction from a prestigious university with almost 200 years of academic history. I would like to thank Dr. Jean-Francois Trottier, former Canada Research Chair in Innovative Materials, Professor and Director of the Nova Scotia Camp Center, who presented my candidature for honorary degree. And I would like to thank the jury for accepting it. I'm an engineer, a businessman, and the Executive of the Year for the Middle East and North Africa for the years 2010 and, the, and 2011. And just in case, if you are wondering, business where I come from, it follows a very stringent standards. The hunger to learn and excel in my personal life and my career is the main driver behind my success. And today, is another important milestone in the never-ending excellence journey. However, the journey was and still is full of challenges. Everyone in their life, everyone in their lifetime goes through a major challenge. Some can fight it hard, some can manage it and find a solution and some will surrender to failure. For those who have not accepted the challenge, we remind them of what Joseph Campbell have said, opportunities to find deeper powers within ourselves comes when life seems most challenging. And we also remind them of what Albert Einstein have said, in the middle of a difficulty lies an opportunity. Now, it's my pleasure to share with you a few challenges in my journey. I accepted my first challenge right after I finished high school. At the time, my plans was where to take up business management courses in a nearby country in the Middle East. However, my parents thought differently about my higher education, and they offered me to study engineering in the United States. Or they offered me to study in the United States with one condition, I opt for an engineering course. At the time, engineers, they were doing very well, and management was not really highly valued. Despite all difficulties, the change in direction, change in language and culture, I finished my engineering courses with the flying colors. I never practiced engineering to its, fully, to its full extent after graduation, but without technical background, I would have not been able to excel in, in management. The second challenge, after I finished my, or after I graduated from the engineering school, when I landed in Dubai uh, from my native place, which is Jordan, I was offered a job in a ready mix concrete company at one third of market price or market rate at the time. It was $400 a month. My passion was to learn more about concrete. This is the world's third largest industry after water and oil. And it affects our life too. Since 6% of the CO2 emissions in our atmosphere comes from the cement industry. And just to give you a sense of scale, the amount of concrete produced every year is sufficient to lay, to lay a dual carriageway 
from the earth to the moon. That's a lot of concrete. <clears throat> I did not hesitate and accepted the challenge. Here again, some of the difficulties were 18 hours of exhaustive daily work in a, a very hot environment, 50 degrees and above. Humid weather conditions, unlike, uh, unlike Halifax, of course. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I reached Halifax, it was, it was raining and it wasn't sunny, you know. And everybody kept apologizing for me. Sorry, we could not have sun for you. And I said, don't worry, I'm not missing anything. <laughs> Where I come from, 360 days of sunlight. So <laughs> due to my passion, not only my passion not only allowed me to overcome the difficulties, but enjoy them. Today, like I told you, I started with $400 a month. Today, I'm the highest paid in the concrete industry. The, the third challenge... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> the third challenge was to revolutionize the concrete industry by providing a sustainable construction solutions to benefit our future generations. While serving my first job, I was shocked with the way this strategic and crucial commodity is handled by the industry. The use of substandard material, lack of automated quality control and production systems. Worst of all, the misunderstanding people had more cement, better concrete. That is, that is very bad. Here, the biggest difficulty was to change people's mindset. Leading the industry by example, establishment of a, a dedicated research and development center, an environmental department, promotion of concrete, green concrete mixes, this has enabled us to save over 3 million tons of CO2 emissions in UAE so far. And we, we currently the first and the only ReadyMix concrete company to be recognized by the National ReadyMix Concrete Association as a sustainable concrete plant. Our plants have achieved process emission reduction by 95% and green concrete production to 75%. While working on a product excellence, management excellence ran in parallel. Some of the achievements under my leadership are UAE President Excellence Award, Dubai Quality Award, and many more recognitions, including international awards of distinction. However, the biggest challenge of all is the real care of the family, the family at home and the family at business. And that is to bring them along the journey, the excellence journey. Today, I am proud to have my family here in this hall. And excellence is part of their life too. Without their support, I would have not been able to reach the site. My family is there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Also, I would like to extend my gratitude to the chairman of Alfara Group, Dr. J.R. Gangaramani, Mr. Adel Saleh, and my uncle, spe specifically my uncle also, who have been my guide for all my challenges and difficulties. My uncle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So since we're talking about challenges, there is a, 
one associated with an opportunity as well for you. For the next 15 years, 1.8 trillion US dollars are projected to be spent for development in GCC countries in the Middle East. The area with the fastest growing economies in the world due to the energy oil gas revenues coupled with the building and investment boom backed by de decades of saved petroleum and gas revenues. Please remember, the door to an opportunity is always labeled push. And they, they don't often come, you know, opportunities, they don't come every day. And when they do, they come flying over our heads. Not to this height, not to this height, but when they do, you have to jump. And I mean it, you have to just jump and grab them. Today, you have achieved a significant milestone in your life. Today, you are here because you are all tigers. And tigers do not eat grass. We are all tigers, and we will never eat grass. Thank you very much. Everybody. Thank you, Dr. Shaheda. Ladies and gentlemen, the business of convocation is concluded.